So in this lesson, let's see how work can be expressed as a scalar product of force and displacement. So let's take a situation where you have a mass M lying on a horizontal plane and a force F is being impressed on it. And the force is acting at an angle theta with the horizontal. And let's say the displacement that happens on account of this is D. So if we resolve the force into its respective components, we'll have the horizontal component as F cos theta and the vertical component as F sine theta. And if you observe, you'll quickly realize that the vertical component F sine theta has no role to play in the displacement of the mass. And the displacement is actually being caused only on account of the horizontal component F cos theta. So we can say that the work done on the mass is equal to the product of force acting in the direction of the displacement, which is F cos theta into the displacement. And we can rewrite this as Fd cos theta. And you'll quickly realize that this is nothing but W is equal to F dot D or the dot product of force with displacement. Now, the other thing you would realize is that as long as theta is less than 90 degrees, cos theta would be positive and therefore the term Fd cos theta would be positive. So we can say that the work done is positive if theta is less than 90 degrees. So this would be a positive quantity if theta is less than 90 degrees. And you don't really have to remember this. You can also see that as long as this force is less than 90 degrees with the horizontal, its horizontal component is actually helping the mass uh, move in the direction of the displacement. Now, let's take another situation where the force is acting at an angle which is greater than 90 degrees with the horizontal. And if we again resolve the force into its respective component, what we'll get is the horizontal component is F cos theta dash and let's say the angle this time is theta dash and the vertical component is F sine theta dash. And let us say the displacement again in this case is D or, or you could take D dash as well. And so once again you will see that F sine theta dash is no role to play in its displacement but if cos theta dash is what is affecting the work done. So we can write that the work done in this case is equal to F cos theta dash into the displacement which has been caused, which we've taken as D dash. And then we can again, like in previous illustration, we can write this as the dot product of F and D dash. But what you'll observe is that cos theta dash would be a negative value. So if the theta dash value is more than 90 degrees, cos theta dash would be a negative value. And therefore this term would become negative and therefore the work done would become a negative quantity. And this would be applicable if theta is greater than 90 degrees. And once again, you can observe that the horizontal component F cos theta dash, when theta dash is nine, greater than 90 degrees, is kind of opposing the motion of the mass. That is, it is acting in the opposite direction of the displacement and therefore, in a way, taking away energy from the mass. So we can say that negative work is happening on the mass. So in the first case, we will say that positive work is happening on the mass because the force is acting in the direction of the displacement, while in the second case, negative work is happening on the mass because the force is kind of opposing the direction of displacement. So in summary, we can say that if force is acting in the direction of the mass, let's say you had a force F in this direction, and let's say the displacement was also in this direction, then we would say that the force is doing positive work on the mass. But if the force was acting in this direction, let's say, force is acting in this direction, but the displacement was happening in this direction, then we would say that force is doing negative work on the mass. Now, let us say that 
there were multiple forces acting on a body. So let's say you had a body over here and you had a force F acting on it in this direction and you had another force acting on it in this direction, let's say. And let's call this force F dash. Now, what you'll do is you can find the work done on the body in two ways. One would be you take the net force acting on the body and therefore to find the net force acting on the body, we'll add the vectors F and F dash. And to add them, what we'll do is we'll, we'll use the parallelogram method over here. And what you'll find is that the net force is this. And once you know the net force, and let's say the net force is F double dash. What you need to do is just do the dot product of F double dash with whatever displacement has happened. And let's say the displacement in this case is let's say D. Then we'll say that the work done is equal to F double dash dot D. So what we've done is we found the net force and done a dot product with the displacement. Alternately, what you could have done is you could have said that the work done over here is equal to sum of the work done by each force. So you would have said work done is F dash dot D plus F dot D. So this would have been same as F double dash dot D. But what is important here is that if you have two forces, three forces, n number of forces acting on a mass, you need to add them vectorially and the dot product of the resulting force with the displacement would give you the work done on the mass.